All right, okay, listen. <laughs> so, there's this thing in Turkey. Uh, Turkey has like a mandatory military service for all males once they reach uh, like adulthood. Uh, similar to Korea, uh, or I guess, you know, Israel, because uh, we got Void in the chat. Um, so it's like a thing that you have to do. Uh, it's a big pain in the ass. Um, like it's fine. A lot of this, like, if you just do it straight, then I think it's like a year. And it's like a lot of basic training. And, you know, there's not, <laughs> it's not very interesting, but it takes a lot of time. Um, and you're likely to not have to, like, see action. Uh, it's basically a perpetuum immobile for high education. Yeah, so if you're a student, then you can have your military service, like, delayed. If you have money, then you can shorten your military service. If you are a foreign citizen, you can completely exempt yourself. You have to pay them a bunch of money. Hold up. Have I told the story of almost getting arrested in Turkey on stream? Yes, I did. Okay, so... That happened. And so what I wanted to do was avoid almost getting arrested again next time I went back to Turkey. So I made an appointment in, at the Turkish embassy in New York City, um, which is fine. I went, I, I, I had an appointment for like two o'clock. I went, I got there early uh, and I sat down and the lady at the front desk gave me like a ticket that was like, you know, a number like at a DMV or something. They're like, this is your place in line. Wait for your number to be called out. So I wait like way too long, even though I already have an appointment. Uh, I go up, I sit down. The lady on the at the desk looks at me expectantly and I tell her my life story. I'm like. I was born here, you know, like I want to get exempt from military service. Here are all of my documents. I came here like a week ago, uh, you know, like I tried to uh, get this thing done, but you guys told me I didn't have the right documents, so whatever. And then I stop and then like I look at her and she's like, I'm a notary. I don't do anything related to the military. You, you're at the wrong like desk. And I looked at my number that like I waited way too long for and that I shouldn't have even had to get in the first place because I had a reservation. Uh, and I was like, what the fuck? And she was like, you're at the wrong desk. I don't know what to tell you. It's like, fuck me. <laughs> yeah, I'm so mad I play 5D chess. <laughs> yeah, no. I go back to the lady at the counter. I'm like, hey, motherfucker. <laughs> I was super nice, of course. I was like, I think I got the wrong thing because I went to the lady and, you know, she was like, and she was like, did I give you that number? I was like, yeah, you're the only person giving out numbers. <laughs> Yes, I didn't go back. I didn't like forge this ticket, right? And she was like, but I give people who need military stuff a military ticket. I'm like, what do you want me to do for you? I can't. These are the facts. I have this ticket. It's not a forgery. You made me waste so much of my time. She was like, okay, well, I'll give you back the other ticket. I was like, okay, sure. Why not? So I sit back down. I wait for my turn to be. It's like an hour after my appointment. I'm sitting there in like bureaucracy hell, but it's fine. I played some, <laughs> I played some chess on my phone. Hey, Poison, how's it going? Welcome. Just in time for a not super interesting, admittedly, story. Finally, my name gets called. <laughs> How you doing, Poison? What's up? I go up to the counter, uh, and it's the same lady. Do I want to tell that part of the story? <laughs> no, I don't. Never mind. I'm gonna skip some details that aren't that important. But I go, uh, it's just so, I had, man, form after form, and I had to be like, yeah, you know, I was like, I'm a foreign citizen, I'm an American citizen, I didn't speak Turkish, I spoke English, because I thought it would just grease the bureaucratic gears to convince them, you know, that <laughs> I, that I was an American citizen who didn't have to deal with this shit, as opposed to, like, a Turkish citizen who's, like, being an ass and just wants to get out of military service on a technicality or whatever. Uh, don't tease us like that. It's it's not worth it. <laughs> Rip my connection. Sorry, poison. Pep OG. There's I, I have to jump through a bunch of bureaucratic hoops. It's fine. I give her like my fucking birth certificate, passport. Uh, you know, Turkish ID, American ID, social security card, like my local deli rewards program. 
uh, you know, like my library card, like everything I've got. I just give her like all my transcripts and shit. She's like, okay, didn't need half of this, but that's fine. She puts it into the system. She asks me a bunch of questions. I answer a bunch of questions. Um, it takes way longer than it should. She has to go back and ask like a million times how to deal with my specific case because apparently, apparently Turkey wasn't aware that I was an American citizen and it was a problem. Uh, she was like, nobody in Turkey knows that you're an American citizen, which explains why, by the way, I was like almost arrested last time I was in Turkey. If I didn't have proof of my American citizenship on the spot, they definitely would have thrown me into the Turkish gulags and I wouldn't be streaming 5D chess here for you today. Not that I'm doing that right now either, but whatever. Free sandwich poggies. There is no free sandwich. I wish. Um, Turkish sandwiches are delicious. Right. So everything happens. Uh, it's like the end of two hours. I've been there for like longer than I've had to be. Um, I sign every last document, answer all the questions. They ask me for like my height and my weight and my mother's maiden name. I have to guess. She is like, what did you study? And it's, <laughs> and I made the mistake of being like, oh, I triple majored in like math, physics and computer science. And she was like, what do I put down for that? And I was like, I don't know. Does it matter? She was like, I don't know, man. Like, this is just my job. Like, I want to do it right. So she has to go back and be like, oh, we had multiple May. How do we handle that? Like, oh, I don't know. Anyway, everything's done. We're both exhausted. And then she's like, okay, now all I need from you is two pictures, like printed photos and I'm like, what do you mean you need two pictures? And she was like, you need to have printed on like glossy photo paper, like passport photos, basically. It's like, nobody told me I needed passport photos. We've been through so much of this. You, everyone here, I was here last, like two weeks ago. And she told me that I needed, she didn't tell me I needed photos. The lady at the front didn't tell me I needed photos. I, she didn't, the internet didn't tell me I needed photos. I was like, I don't, I didn't need. I wasn't informed that I needed photos. I'm freaking out. She's like, she just looks at me. She's like, Samet, don't tell me that you don't have photos. I'm like, bro, I no cap. What do I do? She's like, this is after like bureaucratic hell for like three hours, right? I waited in line twice. She hands me a little business card that she has on her desk. Because apparently she deals with this a lot. She's like, go get your picture taken and come back. I don't care what size. I don't care what resolution. It's like a place. It's on 2nd Avenue. It's like a few blocks down and come back. And I'm like, no, no. And so I go back or I leave the embassy. I walk down to 2nd Ave. In New York, it's like near the United Nations. I see this like hole in the wall place. I walk in. It's in the middle of downtown Manhattan. So there's not, there's like a lot of big businesses and like the UN is there. So it's not like a sketchy neighborhood, right? But this is the weirdest, sketchiest, you know, nothing about suffering. I know I've been through worse. You've been through worse. But the only way that this, <laughs> that this, there, there's any entertainment to the story is if you buy into it. So I need a little bit of that from you, Andre. <laughs> You know, just like empathize here for a moment. Okay. I go to this storefront. It's like weirdly empty. Except for some old guy behind a register. There are a bunch of keys on the wall. There are two of those like leather chairs with places to put your shoes for like shoe repair and shining and stuff. You know what I mean? Uh... And that's like all that there is. And I've been sent to this shop and it's like barren. It's not like finished. It's like a construction zone in the middle of Manhattan. It's really weird. And so I come in and I'm like, is this the place? Like I, I need photos. And he's like, Turkish. And I'm like, yep, that's me. He doesn't seem to speak English or Turkish. I don't know why this guy's the hookup. I guess it's just the closest place to the embassy, right? Uh, and so if it's in hours, it's fast of me waiting there in person. It's not, you know, like I've had to cut this whole process has taken like a month to be fair. But anyway, uh, he's like, yeah, pictures. 
I'm like, yeah, pictures, yeah. This guy's business has three components to it. He does shoe repair. He copies keys, like blank keys. He like makes duplicates of keys and he does passport photos, which is like, how do you do this? Rent for this small kiosk in the middle of Manhattan must be like thousands of dollars a month. I guess that's how many people come here for pictures from the Turkish. It's a weird situation. Anyway, he's like, okay, we have a ton of these stores in Germany. This isn't super normal for America. I wouldn't be surprised if he sells Egyptian souvenirs. It's funny you say that because one of the only decorations in the entire place is like a ceramic set of like brown people walking with camels on like a windowsill. <laughs> the shoe repair photo key dudes. I bet they're run by Turks too, funnily enough. I don't know. It's just not a big thing here in America. Uh, so... <laughs> And I don't see where he's going to take this picture because passport photos, I expect like a studio or something, right? Um, there's one in the central station. <laughs> there you go. So he closes. It's not just a, in the station. It's on like a main avenue um, next to like a massive bank and shit. So he closes the door to the establishment. He's like, okay, in order to perform this, to render the surface, I will need to close the store until it's over. They, he closes the door, so I'm locked in with this guy. It's pretty sketch. And behind the door to the establishment is like a piece of white paper <laughs> taped to the wall. It's like his photo studio. <laughs> And he pulls out from a little cabinet, like underneath, right beside the door, what looks like the first digital camera ever created. <laughs> like, no cap is like this big. It's like three of my face. And it's got this tiny little <laughs> window that's got edit for like an aperture. It doesn't, it's not like an adjustable lens. And it's got this tiny little flash. It looks comical. And it's hooked up with this massive camera directly to a photo printer. <laughs> so there's no processing. He's only... He's, <laughs> he's, he's set this up. He brings this camera, like, so, cl so close to my face. And I'm just there, like, right in front of this little, like, A4 piece of paper. And he's got this right, and he's just looking into my eyes like he's a fucking optometrist. Yeah, that that emote is exactly not the wide one, but the small one is like all that he can see. The, it's like that close to my face. And he's like, smile. I'm like, smile? He's like, no teeth. I'm like, no teeth. He's like, show me your ears. I'm like, okay. He's like, don't move your hair. I'm like, what do you want from me? So we like figure out what he wants from me. And then he... He finally takes the photo just comically uncomfortably close to my face. It's like hilarious. He's about to smother me with this camera. <laughs> and so he does the thing. And then I'm like, are we done? I'm expecting him to like take it and you know, do like if you get your photo taken at like a Sears or whatever, they like take it and then they like crop it or whatever. And then, you know, they like print out the photo, right? <laughs> but he just sets the camera down gently beside the printer and the photo printer he pushes a button and he's like five minutes <laughs> like gotcha five minutes that's fine he has this whole thing set up so that he doesn't have to do any post processing it's like exactly the correct dimensions to print out on what must be the first photo ever print like the first photo printer ever generated <laughs> <laughs> in exactly the right dimensions it's just it's just really funny i like stepped back like five decades no cap well probably three because digital cameras were only just invented and he he advertises this as like this is the third his establishment does three things right he duplicates keys he repairs shoes and he takes passport photos <laughs> this is the third of his triumvirate of services rendered in the middle of manhattan Anyway, it's fine. I wait there. I try to make conversation. He pretends like I'm not talking. I'm like, fine, that's okay. <laughs> it's hilarious how the I the sunglasses emote modification actually works. Triumvirates always fail. Anyway, so it's all done. <laughs> so he asked me if I have, he's like, you have cash? I'm like, no, because I spent my last cash because this lady at the consulate was like, 
X number of dollars that you owe me. And I was like, okay, great. Here's my card. And she was like, do you have cash? And I was like, fuck. And I had exactly the amount of cash that I needed, which was great. It's like, no, I don't have cash. And he's like, okay. Uh, then like $15. And I'm like, wow, that's a lot. And then he points to the side and it just says credit card minimum $15. It's like, dude, I would have bought other stuff. I would have, because I'm like, a, I, I do lock picking. So I would have bought like a bunch of key blanks to rack it up to $15. But anyway, shoes plus key guys are really common in Russia. I guess I'm the only motherfucker who's not like intimately aware with this <laughs> like underbelly of like a service economy in an industrialized country. But fine. <laughs> Imagine if he offered you every single service he does. He was like 15 bucks because that's the credit card minimum. I was like, fine, whatever. I grab him. I go back to the embassy. I expect to get fast tracked, right? Because <laughs> all I've got to do is hand them my photos and then it's over. <laughs> uh, it's also so hot and so humid. And I've also got a bit of an ankle injury from the crazy anime soccer game that I explained that I played. <laughs> earlier so i've got like a i thought i was being sensible wearing like an ankle support walking all over manhattan doing all the shit i'm on my feet for so long but instead of like bracing it it just overheated it which is like the opposite you're supposed to be like ice a swollen ankle so my ankle's fucking killing me might have to amputate this walk back to the consulate i come back they put me through the security again i go upstairs and then i go back up to the window you know with like the lady there and i like hold up i'm like I got the photos. She's like, she just looks at me kind of desperately and is like, I need you to get another ticket <laughs> to go back into the line. <laughs> and I just look at her like, come on, man. <laughs> I get another ticket. The lady at the front desk, she's like, did I fuck up again? Did you get the wrong ticket? And I was like, no, I just had to get the photos. She was like, you dumbass. You, you didn't have photos with you? I was like, I didn't know I needed photos, okay? I'm sorry. That's fine. So she's like, well, I mean, this is what you get. I'm getting shit from this chick. Who fucked up giving me the ticket in the first place, by the way. Because the line for the thing I waited for that I didn't need was so much longer than the line for the thing that I actually needed to be in line for. <laughs> Easily predicted she'd give you another ticket. This ticket in the time, I guess I hit happy hour for when I went to get my photo taken. Cause I'm like eight people in the back of the line now. So I wait another two hours. I finally get there. <laughs> and I sit down and I'm like, whew, she's like, bro, you had to wait so long. It's like, I know. But again, I guess I'm not in like the Russian hell where you have to stand in a bread line for like three weeks. So I'm sorry that this isn't, this isn't to your standard Andre, but I finally get there. We, and the thing that I didn't want to go into by the way was <laughs> the first time I went, which was like three weeks before this, when I went and tried to do this and had to wait in line and they told me I didn't have enough documents. I'm so into the story now, but uh, it was kind of this crazy experience where, cause imagine this. <laughs> Any, imagine any like awful governmental bureaucratic like paperwork thing that you've ever had to stand in line for, especially at like a consulate or an embassy or like a, or like a, uh, any government office, like a DMV, like in the States, right? Um, it's the vibes. It's the most cynical, negative, patience-less vibe ever, right? And that's like what I got from... First, I've been to so many embassies, especially because I've got the triple citizenship. So, like, the German embassy was hellish. The Turkish embassy in that I went to in D.C. was just so tense and awful. And there's so much yelling. Work in a government bureau palace. Place. Sorry. I'm really sorry, Poison. Maybe it's better where you are. But everyone just doesn't want to be there. They're so sick of their shit. And I heard this happening, like, when I was there the last time. But when I went there the first time, I sat down... And I was with this, uh, I had, there was, there was like this young lady at the consulate. Uh, she was like way younger than anyone else, when else who worked there, like early twenties, probably maybe like my age, mid twenties. And the interaction that we had, she was in like an impossibly good mood. Like as I sat down, you know, I like kind of fumbled with my mask and I was like in kind of broken Turkish. This isn't broken, but I had an accent. I was like, my Turkish is like pretty bad. Like, I'm sorry. 
Uh, and she was like, no, we can do this in English. Like, don't worry about it. And so I started speaking in English and I was like telling her my story and the mood that she was in was like impossibly positive for a government official. Uh, and it was like, <laughs> it, it was such a positive experience that when I left, even though I was really upset that like I didn't have the right documents and I had to come back and my parents had to like mail me my birth certificate from like halfway across the country and I had to go back and I only made like the hours long trek in and out of the city for this operation. Despite all of that, I was like, I just experienced like the opening 20 minutes to like a meet cute rom-com movie where like Sandra Bullock is like an attractive, you know, young, like office worker secretary who meets like an awkward, like Keanu Reeves type of person. Not that I'm that awkward in like social interactions, but I was kind of flustered because like I didn't know what I had to do. Um, and I didn't know all the shit that I needed, but it was like crazy. We, we kind of like really hit it off. Uh, it, it was like, wow, that's nuts. Um, she like laughed way too much at like my jokes. <laughs> she was like really empathetic and was like, oh, did everything that she could to help. And then I came back this next day and like the same thing happened. I like shared with her the anecdote about this photo place. You know, we like talked back and forth. Um, and then at the end, she was, it ended up, the vibe was so weird. She was like, it was really nice to meet you <laughs> at the end of like a government transaction that we had. I mean, I'm like super taken. I've been with my girlfriend for 14 years, but there was this vibe where I felt obligated. <laughs> I was like, I am supposed to currently say this is really weird, but like, you know, do you want to get like some dinner or something? <laughs> and she like blushes and like gives me her number at the end of this really stressful, uh, you know, like six hour where everyone is exhausted. And like, I, there's so much yelling all around me of government officials at people 14 years. That's a long time. Our anniversary is on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm sitting there like, wow, this hellish journey is finally over. <laughs> she was like looking at me with like Sandra Bullock rom-com face. And then I got up and, and I was like, finally, it's over. How long do I have until I have to worry about the military? And she was like, 2029. And I was like, oh, shit. And she was like, yeah. Uh, and I was like, she was like, it's really nice to meet you. And I was like, yeah, me too. Getting ready to leave. And she's like, um, well, I, I guess I'll see you next time. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, I guess I'll see you next time. And I just awkwardly like ambled out because I can't do anything with like this information. <laughs> it doesn't matter that I'm like super happy in my relationship, but I feel like I missed some cosmic cue to like have, you know, a long and turbulent relationship with this random <laughs> cute government worker lady where I had to wait in line three times, get this weird picture taken. That's the whole story. That's, I don't know if it was worth, I was on the fence about whether it was worth it to tell that story. It wasn't as like long or substantive as the Craigslist story, but it did happen to me just yesterday. <laughs> um, and I'm still kind of reeling. See you in 2029, I'll be waiting. Uh, <laughs> and I given all of the, it's a thing that guys do sometimes, right? It's like, especially socially unaware guys to like, assume that there is more interest from like a female person who's just being nice to them backwards. But I like quadruple checked in my mind, all of like the factors of like the situation and also listened to her interact with other people. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that there is like a parallel timeline <laughs> where like we're married with many kids in like a few years. It was a weird vibe. That was my day yesterday. And then I went and I bought my actual 14 year anniversary girlfriend, a uh, really nice dinner. And we had a great time. Uh, and I think I might have to amputate my ankle. It w I woke up and it was really sore. That's the whole story. I don't know if it was worth, could we get like a plus in the chat if that story was worth and a minus if it wasn't? And let's play Monopoly chess now. <laughs>